Hello there, you more than 180k awakening people joining me in a wonderful battle against ignorance. Today I will introduce you to a new series I'm going to make. The GOAT of Stand-Up Comedians. First episode, Mitch Hedberg. Enjoy. I like an escalator, man, because an escalator can never break. It can only become stairs. There would, there would never be an escalator temporarily out of order sign. Only an escalator temporarily stairs. Temporary stairs. Sorry for the convenience. Hedberg was born on February 24th, 1968 in St. Paul, Minnesota. After graduating from high school, he moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to pursue stand-up comedy. While he started his stand-up career, he also worked as a cook at Applebee's. Well, I used to be really infatuated with the grill when I was a busboy. I would watch these guys cook, and I, you know, I finally I, I achieved my dream of becoming a cook, which was really easy, because all I had to do is tell the manager, hey man, do you mind if I cook? And he said, yeah, you know, it was real simple to achieve that dream. It was early in his life in Minnesota that he and his family discovered that he had a talent for comedy. In my parents' basement, because my parents were the ones who would always let the kids come over and mm -hmm. mess up the house for the day, and uh, we would put on these skits, and everyone was talented, but now no one does anything in the talent industry except me. I'm the only one who survived through the years, <laughs> man, through the lean years. You know, they all gave it up when times got tough. They were like 15, and they said, no more of this. I don't have a girlfriend. I just know a girl who would get really mad if she heard me say that. I play golf, I'm not good at golf, I never got good, I never got a hole in one, but I did hit a guy, and that's way more satisfying. Way more satisfying. A friend of him from another restaurant let him know about these things called open mics. That's all it took. Dog is man's best friend, except for them drug sniffing dogs. A dog came to my back door, so I gave him a bone. He took the bone out to my backyard and he buried it. I'm going to go out there and plant a tree with bones in it. Then the dog will come back and say, holy shit, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I've created a bone tree. Hedberg never really tried to hide his liberal drug use. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. Used to too. <laughs> That's a classic. Hey, I wear a necklace because it helps me know when I'm upside down. I went to a doctor, all he did was suck blood from my neck. Do not go see Dr. Acula. <laughs> Dr. Acula. That's right. All right, that joke's retarded. I'm aware of no, that. No, it's not retarded. But I have to tell it, because otherwise I would be 30 seconds short every night. I did comedy for a fundraiser once. We were trying to raise money to buy one of those machines that shows how much money has been raised. <laughs> Mitch had severe stage fright, which is strange for a guy who made his living performing in front of people. He told Time journalist Joel Stein during a 1998 interview, I don't like to connect with the crowd. I find that if you look at people's face, you see a disappointed face. I was at a bar, I was minding my own business, no one was talking to me because I just did a show. <laughs> I wear v-neck shirts always, this is a v-neck I got on. Neck is so fragile, man. I can't wear a regular neck shirt. It hurts. And I especially hate turtlenecks. Turtleneck. Like wearing a turtleneck is like being strangled by a really weak guy. <laughs> All day. Like if you wear a turtleneck and a backpack, it's like a weak midget trying to bring you down. So he would often speak with his eyes closed and uh, wear sunglasses while on stage. This would eventually become a trademark of his stand-up persona. Sometimes I wave to people I don't know. It's very dangerous to wave to someone you don't know. Because what if they don't have a hand? <laughs> They'll think you're cocky. <laughs> Look what I got, mother <laughs> That'd be cool if you were a drummer and you accidentally grabbed uh, two magic wands instead of drumsticks. <laughs> you're pounding out the beat. Next thing you know, your bass player turns into a can of soup. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take that joke out? <laughs> can, we, can we edit it? I love cottage cheese. That's why I want to try other dwelling cheeses too. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I want to try studio apartment cheese. <laughs> or maybe igloo cheese. <laughs> igloo or if cheese. I'm feeling adventurous, mobile home cheese. 
<laughs> Don't eat mobile home cheese during a tornado. <laughs> it would be devastating. It wasn't just a matter of setting himself apart stylistically, but a way to avoid looking at the crowd due to stage fright. Hedberg was fascinating. Driven to perform, yet suffered from incredible stage fright. I like rice. Rice is great when you're hungry and you want 2,000 of something. 2,000 of something. <laughs> I got a parrot. The parrot talked, but it did not say I'm hungry, so it died. It died. <laughs> You can't please all the people all the time. And last night, all those people came to my show. <laughs> Mitch was so, so simplistically funny. Few comedians have had his level of delivery. I get up in the morning and I make myself a bowl of instant oatmeal. And then I don't do anything for an hour. Which makes me wonder why I need the instant oatmeal. <laughs> I could get the regular oatmeal and feel productive. <laughs> I was home last week and I heard, a, I heard a gunshot outside of my apartment. Then I saw two guys run by my window. So I was going to call the police. But then I got optimistic. I said, hey, maybe it's just a race. <laughs> <laughs> his face, that smile, that hair, his demeanor, that original styles, shuffling around awkwardly. What a funny comedian. I got a belt on that holds up my pants, and my pants have belt loops that hold up my belt. What the hell is really going on down there? Who is the real hero? Who is the real hero? <laughs> I think Bigfoot is blurry. That's the problem. It's not the photographer's fault. Bigfoot is blurry. blurry. And that's extra scary to me, because there's a large, out-of-focus monster. Roaming the countryside. I saw this lady on TV. She was born without arms. She was born with her hands attached to her shoulders. And that was sad. But then they said, Lola does not know the meaning of the word can't. And that to me was actually kind of worse in a way. You know, not only does she not have arms, but she doesn't understand simple contractions. <laughs> simple contractions. His wife said Hedberg never passed on a job. He'd do three shows a night, then go to the next place and do another weekend of shows. He'd been rejected so many times, he felt like he had to accept while he had the chance. Or else, all the rejections would start coming back. Rejection is, is real tough at first, but after a while you kind of thrive on it. It's an energy in itself just to get rejected. Talk about that. Well, because you want, you want to prove people that, you know, they're wrong, man. Like, mm -hmm. like when I first started doing comedy, people would try to tell me how to dress, and they would try to tell me what, kind of what kind of jokes to do, and they wanted me to go to like a, a stand-up comedy class and have some other guy tell me how to be funny, you know, man? Mm -hmm. and, and funny is natural, you know, you, don't, you can't learn how to be funny, you know. You, you can learn how to say a joke in a certain rhythm, but you can't learn how to be funny. And I knew that, but these people were trying to tell me, right, you got to come to class, and, and we'll tell you like how to present yourself and everything. But in order to make it in stand-up comedy, you can't already have a good job that's the biggest downfall really yeah because you don't care then you just you don't care about you, you you're already making enough money so the drive ain't there you gotta mm -hmm. like be in a job that's worse job than anything that's you worse. want that'll that'll keep you wanting to do it you know my favorite part about mitch is it always seems like he's trying every joke out for the first time i hate to sleep because no i like to sleep actually <laughs> i hate to dream because dreaming takes energy it takes work Sleeping is supposed to be a relaxing affair. I lay down on a bed, it feels great. Next thing you know, I have to build a go-kart with my ex-landlord. <laughs> the go-kart with my ex-landlord. <laughs> hey, if you can't sleep, count sheep. Don't count endangered animals, you will run out. <laughs> Dogs are forever in the push-up position. That joke is dumb, I'm aware of that. Ah, uh, people say, Mitch, isn't it frustrating being on the road by yourself? Yeah, sometimes, like when I throw a frisbee. A <laughs> frisbee? <laughs> hey, I got an apartment. I had a neighbor. Whenever he would knock on my wall, I knew he wanted me to turn my music down. That made me angry, because I like loud music. So he knocked on the wall, I fucked with his head. I would say, go around. <laughs> go around. I could not open the wall. I don't know if you have a doorknob on the other side, but over here, there's nothing. 
It's just flat. I never went to college, but if I did, I have taken all my tests at a restaurant because the customer is always right. Because I didn't go to college, you know, that, that was a big, I used to be a good student for a while, but then I, I gave up on it because it just wasn't interesting to me to be book smart, you know, so I gave up on it at about 10th grade, and that kind of led to a, a deterioration of, uh, in their minds of, of what I was becoming. You know, they thought I was just really going downhill and I was headed for the... I also believe when, you're, uh, when you are on top of the game in school, too, too many other people ain't, and, and like, y you have to kind of wait for other people. So to be smart is a curse, really. Not that I'm trying it's to say I'm really smart, but there's a certain level that the classrooms go at, and if you're always ahead of the level, it gets boring, you know? So I just, I just decided just to, just to give up on it and go below the level so I could keep up that level. way, you know? <laughs> started ditching class a lot and missing work and missing tests and, and school became a challenge for me suddenly and you know yeah, I, I just I just gave up on the academics altogether and my dad got nervous about that you know he because he, he wanted me to be a doctor or something doctor. probably he thought I was you know I was really good with numbers like math so maybe he wanted me to be an engineer. Hedberg got his first big break on the late show with David Letterman. This led to an appearance at the 1998 Just for Laugh festival where he really made an impression. Time magazine once dubbed Mitch the next Seinfeld. The next Seinfeld. So where's your house in the Hamptons? Yeah, that didn't materialize. <laughs> what year was that? That was a long time ago, man. That was like um, 98, maybe. 98, yeah. And what happened? Um, well, uh, man, you know, I, I'm not cut out for that. I think it was uh, the guy was wrong, obviously. <laughs> was wrong. By the way, you know that Time Magazine fired that guy, I think. <laughs> yeah, what kind of prediction was that? Yep. They're like, you know that prediction you made about the next Seinfeld? You're gone. You're gone. I was at the Montreal Comedy Festival, and the guy who wrote the article was there, and he, uh, he took a liking to my comedy. And he took my picture, and he put it in Time Magazine, full length. You know, you could even see my feet, you know. You see my head <laughs> to my my feet and I picked it up in a gas station in Iowa and I flipped over and I was just blown away but, but he called me the next Seinfeld I think only because I have a sitcom deal now and and right now since he just went off the air everyone's looking for the next sitcom star stand-up mm -hmm. guy so they're kind of they're trying to peg me as that guy I had a pilot for MTV that went south so if, you know it's the road man I'm stuck to live performance that's all I can do the guy who writes with Mike Judge on that cartoon uh, uh, the, what about the Texas family the cartoon what is, I don't know the name of it King of the Hill King of the Hill King he I met with Hill. his partner and he said I see you as a tennis instructor <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding me Tennis instructor on Zen. Did he know you at all? <laughs> no, so you is like a drug addict. <laughs> drug addict. <laughs> Maybe a counselor, you know, after the drug disaster. Yeah, drug counselor, what an irony. Mitch Hedberg's movie career was short and almost insignificant. After his own movie, Los Enchiladas, a film about workers at a Mexican restaurant in Minnesota, premiered at Sundance in 1999, and failed to gain any interest, Hedberg was cast as a stoner on that 70s show. Number 10, I have limited counter space. Please remove your hot dog. All right. I don't see why you can't just service our food, Frank. We are paying customers, you know. Hey, I did not lose a leg in Vietnam so that I could serve hot dogs to teenagers. <laughs> you have both your legs, Frank. Like I said, I did not lose a leg in Vietnam. Hedberg made a brief appearance in the film Almost Famous and later took a small role in Lords of Dogtown before his death in 2005. And that was it. I saw a commercial that said, forget everything you know about slipcovers. So I did. <laughs> slipcovers. And it was a load off my mind. And the commercial tried to sell slipcovers, but I didn't know what the hell they were. <laughs> now, is a hippopotamus a hippopotamus or a really cool apotamus? Apotamus. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I like to take a toothpick and throw it in the forest and say, you're home. <laughs> you're home. One time I was drinking before a show and my manager said, Mitch, don't use liquor as a crutch. I can't use liquor as a crutch because a crutch helps me walk. <laughs> Liquor severely fucks up the way I walk. It ain't like a crutch, it's like a step I didn't see. A step I didn't see. Towards the end of his life, Hedberg was constantly touring. Even at the peak of his fame, he never seemed to feel like he'd been accepted. So he relentlessly traveled and performed until his last days. I got enough comedy gigs to actually go on the road. I got four gigs in one month 
which was $400 total, which was enough to pay rent and have a couple hamburgers. So I quit my job immediately and just stayed on the road as much as I could. And from then on, I just was able to build it. But I also had a girlfriend who supported me so hard, man. So I had to, I had to throw that piece of information in there. Piece of yeah, information. Yeah. Can you make a decent living on the road? Yeah, yeah. You oh, know, you that, can. That's the thing, you know, like, uh, I didn't know that at first, but... Uh, you can do it. You You're a headliner it. now, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, like can you make a, a, a half a million dollars a year? Oh, yeah. You, oh, half yeah. a million dollars a year. Can you make more year. than that? In 2005. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think things are, yeah, pretty, things are going good. pretty good, man. So I just believe that, that if you're doing what you if you're happy, is, you know, that's what success is about. Because it doesn't have to be about entertainment or making a lot of money. But, you know, you just got to gotta really love what you do. I'm so so uh, blessed because most of my friends, they don't they don't love what they do. They, they do what they do, but they don't love it. I, Dr. Scholl makes foot products. <laughs> And he's a doctor, which means he went to school for a long time. But it doesn't take a lot to figure out that stepping on a cushion will be more comfortable. Stepping on a cushion. That dude wasted lots of time at school. Because I would have bought that from a Mr. Show. <laughs> I guess I got to end now. <laughs> I wrote a script and I gave it to a guy who reads scripts and he read it and he said he really likes it, but he thinks I need to rewrite it. I said, f that, I'll just make a copy. <laughs> make a copy. Hedberg's drug problem was never a secret, though most people didn't realize how serious it was. In 2002, he was hospitalized because his leg was so infected from injecting heroin that the doctors almost amputated it. It was 13 hours of surgery. They took um, muscle out of, the, out of his back and transferred it to his leg. Unfortunately, Mitch was using drugs more extensively than what we were aware of. On March 30, 2005, Hedberg was found dead in his room at the Westminster Hotel in Livingston, New Jersey. This morning we've learned a popular comic from St. Paul has passed away. Mitch Hedberg died in a hotel room in New Jersey on Wednesday. His death was formally announced on April 1st, leading some fans to believe it was an April Fool's Day joke. That's all for today, folks. Mitch Hedberg was one of the greatest comedians of all time. He will always be remembered for his signature style and his one-of-a-kind delivery. Unfortunately, before he could truly break through and claim the fame he deserved, Hedberg died of a drug overdose in 2005. Let's remember him for his legacy and let's fight together the war against ignorance. It's a good war. See you in the next video. Bye bye. I was gonna clean my room, but then I got high. I was gonna get up and find the room. But then I got high uh, My room is still messed up And I know why Yeah, cause I got high Because I got high Because I got high